Hi guys and welcome to another session for finance interviews. We've been consistently targeting finance interviews. We've already covered a live session on a case study for the first round of a finance interview. We also gave you a small mini course which we just launched. I hopefully you have registered for that. If not, the link is in the description. And today we're going into the second round which is more or less into technicals. <laughs> The prerequisites to actually attempt this test is the fact that you need to know the linkages between financial statements. That's the reason I have always stressed on the fact that you need to know accounting properly, right? Second thing is you also need to be aware and practically aware about how these ratio analysis works, right? And third is also have an understanding of valuation, which is majorly DCF. And you cannot do DCF without understanding how to do the free cash flow calculations, right? So in this case study today, uh, we are taking a variant of such a technical interview, which is going to test you on finding the errors in an existing financial model. There are a lot of companies in investment banking, which will give you such case studies in which there is an existing financial model and you need to find the errors and also be cases which also tell you to complete the model plus also calculate the free cash flow and also do the valuation. Uh, the case study that we are targeting today is only going to be about finding the errors. You do not know the prerequisites for uh, attempting this case study, which you will realize. I would highly recommend you to take up our financial modeling course, which is a 200 hours comprehensive program right, in which we focus specifically on placements, right? So the entire content is made from the perspective of the interview. So let's get started with this case. To look at the text which is written here, it says that there are five mistakes in the financial model, right? And we're supposed to find that error and we're supposed to correct it, right? And also be aware that these cases will also mention what not to adjust or what not to change. In this case, it's written that the green and blue font numbers don't have to be changed. Now let's get into the model. First and foremost, you need to look at the data structure. I always stress on the fact that do not start attempting without looking at the data. And I can clearly see here that we've got two yearly data. And after that, we start looking at quarterly data. So there's, got, there's about four quarters of data which is available here. And then we are there's a forecasted year uh, financials for 2013, right? Now it says that the balance sheet has a mistake. So that means we need to go to the balance sheet. So let's go to the balance sheet and we clearly see that the balance sheet does not tally, right? Even on the H column and neither on the I column, right? Now, how do you approach this case study? It's a very simple approach. First, you need to just forget about all the financial statements and just focus on balance sheet, right? So if I see out here, we can start looking at the liability side, right? So I can see, let's let's look at the debt calculation, right? So you can just press F2 and check whether the calculation is happening correctly. It looks fine. Let's look at the current liability. It's a blue font, so we don't change that. And if you see equity, let's look at equity. So last year's equity plus net income and minus dividend. So that also looks fine. So don't think so there is any error on the equity side. Let's go to the asset side now, right? Now, current assets, we're not supposed to change it's blue. Uh, let's look at fixed assets. Now, 3085, okay? Now it might appear, so there's no formula out here, right? But we can just quickly uh, just take our cursor and select these three cells and see if it actually matches and it does not, right? So if you see out here, our value comes out to be as 3065, right? But the value which has come out here is 3085. So that means there needs to be a correction out here, right? So that's the first mistake we identified is the fact that it has to be 3065, right? Now, uh, but the balance sheet still does not tally, right? So let's go and see what other mistakes could be only on third quarter of 2013, right? So let's look at cash now. So, so you see how I'm going back words to other statements, right? So from here, I now go into cash and cash equivalents. So I see the change in cash. Let's see if the formula is right. Looks fine. Let's look at depreciation. Depreciation, uh, it's a little odd out here. If you see out here, it's positive. Here also it's positive. Here is everywhere it's positive, but here it's negative. So that might be a challenge out here because if you see out here in the in the left cell, there is a minus sign which is put, but in the right cell, there is no. So we'll just put a minus sign here out here and see that the balance sheet tallies, 
right? So the first issue itself got discovered in the balance sheet itself by just going reverse, right? Let's go to the next, uh, the next column. Now in the next column, you see the balance, uh, the balance sheet does not tally by 366. Now again, let's follow the same approach. Let's look at equity, right? Now you can see that the equity has directly been linked to the last year's equity, which uh, just to be sure, you want to just make sure that you just uh, do the correction again. And if you see, as soon as I uh, copied the formula to the right, the calculation happened correctly, right? And let's look at the last value, right? So. Again, what I'll do is for the last cell also, I'm just going to paste it out here. And let's look at the last 2013 expected column. And it says uh, FI 2012's uh, equity plus net income. But if you see out here, there is no mention of dividends, right? So dividends has to be reduced. So let's do, uh, let's just reduce dividends from the cash flow statement and that we will have it out here, right? So there you go. And now there's just a small uh, mismatch of about 25. Let's see where that 25 is coming from, right? Now, uh, let's go and see whether any other line items on the, uh, the on the asset side is not matching, right? So if you see total assets summation looks fine because cash plus fixed assets EOP, EOP basically means end of period and current assets, that looks fine. Uh, but if you see out here fixed assets, this is also fine. Capex also is fine because it's just coming. If you see the addition of these four quarters, it comes out to be 400, so that's fine. But if you look at the depreciation, now that's where the worry is because if you see for four quarters, the value out here comes as to be 315, right? However, if you go back and see the depreciation in cash flow statement, let's see if the depreciation matches in the cash flow statement, right? Depreciation and amortization, right? So it comes out to be at 340. Now that's odd right because uh in the balance sheet we've got uh the depreciation coming up as 315 but in the cash flow statement it is coming uh to be as 340 so that looks like some trouble now this depreciation is finally in the cash flow statement coming up from income statement right so let's let's trace it back to income statement and if i see an income statement i've got four columns and the value if I just take up all these values out here, it comes out to be as 340. So that means there is some error out here, right? Now, how to look at the error is to see whether depreciation and amortization is actually tallying for each and every year. So if I talk about, let's say, first quarter of 13, uh, it looks as 75. That looks fine, right? Because it's 75 out here. And in the cash flow statement also, it's 75. And in the balance sheet also, it's 75. So that, that looks fine, right? Let's look at second quarter of 2013. So this is coming up to be 80. Uh, out here, it is coming up to be 80 as well. And in the balance sheet also, it's coming as 80. So that looks fine. That doesn't seem to be a challenge. Let's go to third quarter of 2013. Now here it's coming up to be 80. Uh, in the cash flow statement, obviously it will come as 80. But, uh, and also in the balance sheet is also it's coming as 80, right? Okay, now finally we have to look at fourth quarter of 2013 right here it comes up to be 105 uh in my cash flow statement also the same value comes however if you see out here in the cash flow balance sheet for fourth quarter uh, fourth quarter of 2013 the value seems to be wrong right it's coming up as 80 right now for benefit of the doubt what we're going to do is we're going to adjust the income statement value of the depreciation rather than fiddling anything out here, right? So let's just go out here and you can see it might be a typo here because uh, suddenly the amortization is 25 for all the years, but suddenly it's 25. So maybe the mistake is a typo out here. So I'm just going to change that. And now you can see that the balance sheet out here is matching with the balance sheet in the cash flow statement. And it is also matching with in the depreciation in the balance sheet, right? Now, the fourth quarter of 2013 still does not match, right? So let's see what other mistakes could be, right? So let's now look at uh, some of the values out here in the asset side, which might give us a hint on where it might have gone wrong, right? So let's just quickly look at the calculation, which might have been done in the cash flow statement related to the asset side of the balance sheet, right? Now, uh, if I see out here, uh, net income is fine. It's just coming from the income statement directly. Depreciation, we just corrected it. So that's not a problem. Capex, 
Okay, now capex, uh, let's see if it actually makes sense. Uh, capex should be for four quarters, it should be 400. Let's see if this value is coming up the same. Absolutely, spot on, right? Dividends is a straightforward calculation. Uh, let's look at change in current assets. Now, now that looks a little odd out here because uh, if you see in most of the cases, the change in current assets is last year minus this year. But out here, we what we've done is we've taken this value and we're trying to subtract it, right? So just, just to be sure, let's try to just copy this formula to the right. And bingo, the balance sheet tallies. Because what had happened was actually, if you see in the balance sheet, there is no change in current assets, right? Let me just rewind that for you to see, right? If you see here, uh, current assets is 8150 in uh, third quarter of 2013 and 8150. So ideally in my cash flow statement, there should be no change. The change should be zero, right? But if you see, there's a mistake out here, which has been done, right? So that's the reason that 50 has come up. And because of that 50, the value sheet is not telling. So I'm just going to copy that to the right. So this is also one of the cases which might turn up in the interview. Uh, now you can clearly see this is nothing. This is not financial modeling, right? But if you see the investment bank is finally asking you to know this, that means knowing accounting is very, very important, right? So if you are appearing, if you are lucky enough to get such opportunities, make sure that you know financial modeling. Otherwise, such opportunities will go for waste. And I'll see you in the next lecture. Bye bye. It is a new video just coming up every week on finance, investment banking, career guidances. So if you want to stay updated with such content, please do subscribe to our channel. Thank you. Bye-bye.